Hello and welcome, this is your GM in the Great Barrier, broadcasting from the center of your entertainment galaxy. We're back with some Star Trek Adventures Broken Sword. We are today on episode two of our second season. Uh, keep duck, your wee pulse. Uh, part one. So... When last we left off, uh, the crew of the Yan was uh, just absolutely stricken. Um, the main crew, uh, the like the main group of the crew that had been together out on the streets of Zethlor and some of the markets had already come under one ambush previously, and. As part of that ambush, they had already suffered one loss. Um, while they were able to drive off the Rantal, thanks mostly to the measured aim of the ship's engineer and uh, perhaps person closest to the captain, uh, Raldar, um, their security, uh, the person that has basically taken over at security, uh, Woe, had seemed to have encountered a familiar face from her past, another Kazinti that quickly incapacitated her and seemingly beamed away with her in spite of a blow that was struck by Azik. Um, in the process of that firefight, you managed to just pull yourselves together, and with the help of Zionol... Um, supplying a distraction to yet more bounty hunters. Uh, Azik, Raldar, and Traven Lex, who were all uh, out there, managed to make their way back. Um, they had extended a similar warning to the captain, or at least alerted him that the crew had been attacked and that they needed him out there. Uh, when Tabok attempted to make his way back, he and his... Um, bodyguard uh, Dekoth engaged an enraged Klingon a Kushkawi the um, variant of uh, Klingon most common uh, to the Discovery era um, in a straight up firefight between the two uh, numerous disruptor bolts flew several of the uh, some of the guards i think had gone down as well or at least taken some hits um but in the end dakoth found himself alone um as a bolt flew out and but uh, before he had a chance to look again the captain seemed to be gone like uh, seemingly vaporized on the spot dakoth engaged the klingons in a hopeless battle uh, fighting to avenge his captain, but wound up ultimately just thoroughly beaten down by their leader, who wound up uh, firing a disruptor and uh, ultimately killing the bodyguard, sending yet another warrior on to Stovalkor. Um, the crew did not learn of the fates of the other half of the crew until they made it back to the Yan, and at... Uh, near the last moment, they had beamed back Dekoth's body and found the captain was nowhere to be seen. Uh, likewise, they had... Uh, well, as they more, uh, they took a moment to mourn the loss of uh, Dekoth, the um, Traven had taken a chance to let Kresik at least know about this, who was awaking from his hibernation. And so... The crew now has to resolve what to do about their missing captain. Although, while so far as they know he is likely dead, we ourselves know just a little bit better. For at the end of last session, Tabak found himself just barely aware of hull plating beneath his feet. Let's go ahead and move you around. Set here. 
Tabak, your sense of perception as we come in and join you. Actually, before we do that, I I need to take one abrupt little pause here because I realized that uh, I realized that there were shoutouts that needed to be done. I'm so sorry, everybody. Um, the the first one I need to make just real quick would be one that I try to consistently get at because we have a couple of friends that stream on the channel um, in particular there's one as always for our good friend the overland gamer who has been streaming some fallout 76 and has their regular overland gamer podcast as well um joe i remember you happen to have something actually very special in the works too um or rather you're going to talk about that something yeah. fallout themed war war never changes but hope, hope always remains. The Fallout for Hope initiative was born in 2020 after the Fallout community mobilized to help individuals in the community struggling through tragedy and hardship. Of course, 2020 was the great pandemic. Um, I, we don't know how great it was, but um, the Chad... Uh, a Fallout 76 podcast put together a group of streamers that get together about every November and December in order to stream and help raise money for St. Jude's. It has grown from just doing St. Jude's in the fall to also doing um, some charity stuff for the Alzheimer's, uh, Alzheimer's Association and a couple other um charities i'm my, i'm drawing a blank as to what they are um since 2020 the fallout community has raised almost five hundred and twenty-five thousand dollars, um and we've had i believe over 635 uh gamers participate in this so um it's a really cool organization and event that is coming up uh, it starts in, where's my calendar for it, in nine days. So I believe that would be the 17th. Yeah, um, the 17th is when it starts. It'll go through till December. Um, check out Fallout for Hope on the um, Twitterverse or Xverse, whatever you want to call it. Um, I, they've also got a Facebook page and falloutforhope.com you can check more information about it there um, i am going to be streaming on my channel um some fallout 76 possibly some fallout uh 2d20 content fallout 2d20 is the fallout tabletop role-playing game from modifius the same crew that that brought us star trek adventures um and my podcast is also going to be doing some fallout 2d20 uh, solo plays to help celebrate the event. So um, a lot of exciting things coming. Um, be sure to, you know, the, I can't, being a single dad, I can't imagine um, my kid getting sick and not having support of a resource like St. Jude's. Um, and there's so many people that do go through that. So uh, definitely check us out, check the, the falloutforhope.com out. And uh, yeah. Exciting times ahead. And thank you so much for that, Joe. Um, yes, definitely. We'll try to give another marker for that as well. Come the 15th, which will be our next session of Broken Sword. Um, other things to put on that calendar relating to other channels, uh, just to give a nod to some of our other friends of the channel uh, there is of course our own uh, well, one acknowledgement to of course one of our players uh, also uh, caligo the blue uh, <clears throat> as he's here on twitch our chief engineer um just in case anything's going there give them a follow as uh, you get the opportunity um I would also say one other shout out 
over to some very good, uh, well, very good entertaining friends of the channel, um, the Architects of Fate, who they have been a constant source of entertainment. They've been also very, uh, <clears throat> they've helped to uh, inspire some of the features as we made the switch over to Affiliate, and it's just good general Trek-related fun. Um, but in particular, they are running their Cookie Trek games on Fridays. I think now they've moved it to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's a lot of fun if you have some idle time and want to uh, give them, uh, like, basically use the Star Trek Adventures engine to break a Star Trek script in essentially an hour and a half. Um, that And they have a couple of games that go on Mondays as well as other days of the week. But definitely check them out. Uh, so, with all of that said, <clears throat> and since we've already gotten our recap out of the way, uh, I think that we should just go ahead and jump back to where we were supposed to go, which for a moment takes us back to a very, uh, well, it takes us back to the one figure that seems to have been missing this whole time. Tabok, you are steadily regaining some of these senses, a, a vague idea of what's around you. It's more so feel than sight as we start out here. It is the hard metallic feel of deck plating as you come to, of a fashion. Something simple, utilitarian, cold. Uh, you realize that you have been, as you come to, you have been prone for some stretch of time, and that surroundings are... Every sense that you would have to truly take things in is only... Uh, it's as if all of them are working through a, a fog, and such that it is only that massive feel of something cold and imposing or something like just so unyielding as that floor and that steady tug of normal gravity that gives you the sense of... Uh, well, that is the first sensation that rouses you. I can't see. My, my senses are dulled, so I really can't see anything. Or hear anything. You are still uh, trying to... Uh, you are still kind of basically coming to those senses, so that's... Uh, you may be able to pick up more as you, like, start to come to. Um, I'll, I'll give you that as you open your eyes, uh, the floor around you, uh, they're very simple utilitarian panels. Um, you don't recognize anything unique to the design, I would say. You also don't recognize much beyond the uh, beyond the look of the floor, as if light itself seems to simply give out beyond the confines of this floor panel here. I know it. I'm dead, and because of the failures of my sire and grandsire, I am in Koth, playing on limbo. <laughs> <clears throat> Surprise, everybody. It's the life and death of Tabok. No, no. Um, Tabok Instant is... promotion for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, Tabok, as you uh, come to... You find your... Uh, you find that the surroundings are... Once, uh, uh, sim uh, as simple as described... You also find um, um, 
I guess there's not much that immediately comes to your attention. This just... Do the deck panels underneath me, are they... Do they follow a standard Klingon aesthetic? They're not dissimilar to panels that have been used on at least a Klingon-manufactured ship. Um, It would be tough to discern right away whether we are actually... Uh, like the specific class or anything or indeed um you don't i might not be on a ship i could be in a building but there's a design aesthetic that klingons have so mostly i just making sure wherever i am i should expect klingons yeah i'll tell you what give me the first roll of the session if you please and as we do this um i will say that i will allow the residual momentum pool from last time to remain in place if you would like to spend it to uh, try and earn something. Um, you do also, I suppose, have the momentum to ask a question if you would like. Um, but I, since we are at the start of a new adventure, I am also taking additional threat for the uh-huh. start. Oi! Six additional threat? Okay. It's always one per player. All right, so what am I rolling, sir? Uh, I guess that would depend upon what more you want to try and look for. I could follow up with what we were just talking about with perhaps an engineering and insight role. I will give you that role. Okay. I Uh, I don't suppose... Okay, I don't suppose any of my focuses would have any. Xenotechnology? Mm. Would that apply? I don't... I do not believe that would be relevant here. Yeah, it's the only one that could possibly have had any effect on it. But here we are. And the first roll of the evening says... Ooh. Okay. Also, quick apology to uh, everybody. We're having just some slight connection issues for some reason. Our OBS appears to be having some difficulties. Yeah, <clears throat> Twitch says the broadcast has ended. Yep. Let me uh, just give that a refresh there, and we should be back. Oh, that means I'm going to be downloading these later. And uh, Actually, no, the recording file should still work, so... It's not ideal, but we'll I'll make it work. Anyway. Uh, let's see here. So Sorry, this yeah, is no I'm still not through. getting anything on the Twitch. No, try giving it a refresh real quick. No. I suppose chat if you are there and want to affirm that you can see us, we always appreciate that. Engagement is always nice. Yeah. Anyway, so, yes, one success. All right. Well, I, I guess... Uh, I will let you hold the moment. Uh, I will let you make use of the momentum before the end of the scene, if you so wish. Uh, but I can at least tell you that uh, while you aren't entirely certain about the nature of the design per se, um, it doesn't seem to be anything particularly special. At least that is to say, you don't think that this is anything that would be terribly ornate that would be used on say one of the um prettier quote unquote house ships of the era but i am on a ship like i'm getting the vibe the the normal thrumming vibration that you would normally have on a ship i will say that there is a feeling of that sort of vibrance as you run your hands along it and try to get a sense um it's 
not one you are used to, so you don't say from the feel of the deck plate, you're not sure whether you're going at a quarter impulse speed or pushing warp five or something of the sort. You But and then the uh, ship's engine is functioning. You can kind of get the <clears throat> from what you're guessing, the feel of a uh, ship's reactor functioning or like an EPS grid kind of at work. A beating heart of the ship, as it were. And something with artificial gravity, because it would be different than the planet below. It does indeed seem to feel that way. Can I? Are my eyes coming any more into focus? Like, can I see more of the, the room that I'm in? Indeed, indeed, a little more. Um, and as they do, you find that. Well, this, it still seems weird. The walls around you still seem dark to non-existent. It is not something that... It doesn't seem to comport with how you would understand like the logic to a room. It's like staring into just an absolute void around you. Do I have enough... Where I'm looking for it. Do I have enough uh, physical control, you know, a gross dex, you know, gross dexterity to stand up? Hmm. I will have you make a roll on that as well, and I will call that a fitness plus command roll. difficulty on this one, I'm going to set to two, and I'm going to remind you there is momentum available. I will take one of those momentum. Your wish is my command. And second roll of the session says, ooh. That gives you an additional two successes. So that will... Uh, Go ahead, and I'm just going to say uh, the momentum that you have there, Traven, that will reflect the more accurate count of the uh, of where the momentum is at the moment. Okay. So, uh, I'm yes, Tabak, on my feet. No. Pulling yourself up, Tabak, uh, you find there's a little bit of a groan to your... Um, to your limbs, or something seems to protest. You don't know entirely why it feels as though, uh, if not necessarily a strain, there's a certain sluggishness at the moment. Pat myself down, looking for wounds. Mm. That I can freely give you, there are none about. You seem uh, wholly uninjured. All right. Well, seeing as this bit of darkness looks the closest bit of darkness, I will stagger towards in its general direction. Okay. Uh, in the moments that you... While doing that, I will check to see if I am still armed. Uh, as you... Stagger towards the seemingly void fill, uh, the voided space ahead of you. Um, your hands t uh, check to your uh, check to your sides and to your back. The mechlets that would be, would have been slung behind you are gone. The disruptor pistols, wrist communicators, um, and rifle that you were carrying in your hands before are all and gone. And my ductog. The ductog is indeed also gone. Okay. And as you step to the very edge of the uh, precipice here, uh, precipice, edge, rather the edge of what you can perceive would be the better way to refer to it. The, uh, suddenly, in a uh, fairly sh uh, in stunning, uh, well, in very quick fashion the surroundings begin to 
take hold. And you see almost, uh, you see the contours of walls that uh, now surround, uh, that surround the cell. Did the lights come on? There's probably some sort of light uh, system at work, and I didn't like how that came out quite. Let me just fix things very quickly. Um, it doesn't feel quite like the lights themselves came on so much as the... It's almost as if the walls illuminated by themselves, although the light source is unclear. Ah, sourceless lighting. Interesting. So there's no shadows. I'm not casting shadows in any particular direction. Uh, you do indeed look down and see that you have a shadow, it would seem. All right. From directly above? Uh, yes, I would say that much. Okay. All right. So there's a source of light directly above me. Uh, so there's a door. Is it... A ship's door? A mechanical door? A wooden door? The door appears mechanical in nature, and indeed also seems to be metallic. Is there a panel? There are no it... panels, nor any discernible control system. Is that a big window in the middle of it? It would appear to be so, but as you pl uh, would you place your hands up to discern anything there? Yes. There appear to be bars in its place, thus allowing you some way out. Well, there is at least something to... There is something beyond the room, it would seem, or like uh, it ventilates into something, but you can't discern from the flow of air any sort of... Uh, there's no sign of an object or, or... Well, rather, you can't discern essentially what is beyond this door. Right. It's probably probably a corridor, and it's probably darker than the room that I'm in, so therefore I won't be able to see into it. But yep. the door looks pretty much like a standard Klingon design. It does look pretty familiar in that sense. All right. I'd say that everything here still seems to fit with uh, Klingon design ethos. All right feel on either side of the door. I'm looking for a panel line or something that I can pry open. As you run your hands along that, there is a sudden change. Something that through the door you see but takes more shape in... It feels as though it's more something glancing at you from somewhere beyond. The glow, uh, a at sudden me. yellow glow of eyes. Who are you? Who are you to take a Klingon captive? Who are you? I ask first. The eyes look unmoving. Hmm. Choose your pain. Choose your own pain. Choose your pain. I do not have time for you. Acknowledged. And in that moment, Tabak, a ring of flames oh. begins to surround you. Oh, and catching, wonderful. Yeah, catching at your arms, like searing away at the flesh uh, from your arms to your legs, you feel instantly overcome. And let's go ahead and roll for this. Um, that would be... Let's see, that would fall under this one. We correct environmental damage here. So. 
I fell into a fire. And give that just a quick roll. Mm. Okay, that is three plus two effects, which have the vicious one and intense effects. So that will be a total of seven points of damage. Uh, Tabak, you realize that you are in standard uniform and that your armor components are gone, so you are eating all ah. seven stress. Oh, happy day. Would you like to ignore the injury, or would you uh, elect to take that instead? Um, in order, I to... still have I still have five points of stress left over from the previous fight. For our purposes, I'm going to allow that your stress is. Uh, back to full. Sorry, I ought to have clarified that at the start. Uh, well, I have available to me one more momentum, so it would that will help me avoid the damage. It would require the expenditure of a point of momentum and a point of threat. I have a question. Go ahead. Is this a lethal act by an NPC. This does not mm. constitute a lethal act. Okay. So, Just curious. Tabak, this would constitute a non-lethal injury for you, and um, you will not die at the end of the scene. Uh, however, you will be prone and uh, unable to act for a period of time. And a little crispy. Indeed. Well, so, I guess want to save that momentum then. All right. You could always give the GM two points of threat in order to um, ignore that injury as well, or you could expend your determination if you so wished. It is early in the session, of course, so I will let those decisions come to you. Um, I had forgotten about determination. Hmm. Then I that's a yeah. I will like I like that. I will use my determination and avoid the injury and if possible hop out of the ring of fire uh what would the value be that you are attempting to use you you do need to call upon a value in order to yep. avoid it yep i will die but i will not die stupidly It is ironic from where we were at the end of last time, but so be it. So, Tabak... He, he was cranky. <laughs> <laughs> Not stupid, he was cranky. There's a big difference. <laughs> and the difference is, I say there's a difference. Fair <laughs> enough, fair enough. So, Tabak, the flames just wreathe around you, and you can feel the sizzle on your, uh, on your arms, on your hands, uh, just engulfing everywhere around you it uh, uh, it just thoroughly envelops you but through this you have the inclination to get through to not yield yeah. to be unbowed give me your best sort of uh, inspirational what's how is Tabak determined to take one step forward and to try and exit this? Give me your best sort of interplay of that. Mm. <laughs> well, at least it's not a plasma fire as I get my way out of it. Sorry, it's... Uh, <laughs> I can't really think of anything inspirational. It's just more instinctual and... You know, he's been on fire before as an engineer, so hmm. more along the lines of, okay, it's orange fire, not green fire. I can I, I can survive this. Just get the hell out of it. Yep. And we use the momentum, right? Uh, no, no I use my determination. Yep. Oh. All right. So with that, the the flames will begin to peter out. And the voice will rejoin one more time. 
Try again. We shall. Later. And as they vanish, I'm going to spend two threat to put an immediate end to this scene. Ah! <gasps> You're not allowed to use that. Oh, but I am. Oop, didn't mean to take the didn't mean to take the set away there. All right. So, uh with that, let's go ahead and take a look over at uh let's go back to the ship then. So, uh Let's see. When last we had left off there, of course, uh, the... Uh, well, everyone save for Woe and Tabak are currently back aboard the Yan now. One of uh, them is quite dead. Oh yes, Dakoth is... Well, Dakoth is also back on the ship, so... Uh, but yes, he is indeed dead at the moment. Um, and will stay that way. I have no plans of changing that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Shush. Even though I have the talent, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm not gonna use it because I'm gonna respect it. Mm-hmm. Yes, yes. Um, I respect the narrative agency. You you don't have any need for Decoth's ribs anyway until uh, certain threats should be awakened and then you face the terror of Ribsy. I, I have broken the taboo. I have employed the soundboard. Dang, I feel like you should spend some more threat for that one. Probably. I'll drop a point of threat. There we go. And uh, here I was thinking Traven was going to cook us some Klingon ribs for dinner. Ooh. Oh my God. I'm retaking a point of threat. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. All right. So It's mystery meat again, guys. <laughs> All right. Looks like meat is back on the menu. All right. So um, let's see. First and foremost, uh, let's see. Um, let's go on down the list. Uh, first, uh, Calico, if you're okay, would you want to? Uh, or would you want to take a moment to? Uh, I, I was basically going to just see what everyone was doing going down the line, and uh, if you're comfortable with that, we uh, you can go first here. So, no, I think it's doing all right. <laughs> all right. So, uh, going on down the line, what would you be doing? Um, what would the first thing that you would be doing it right now? Or what would <clears throat> be the first thing you were doing right now? Blech. Not being able to talk Blech. is not good. Make sure our ship is ready in case we get a. Uh... A oh, nice, a nice, unwelcome group of people who want my money. <laughs> yes, on my head. Your money, your bones, what have you? Yep. Yes, yes. Uh, so let's pick up. I guess would you be trying to uh, power up the ship from the uh, reactor pit, or would you be going to the bridge in order to try and uh, get the command systems working? How would you be uh, going about this? Reactor pit, definitely. <laughs> All right, so we'll start setting up a. Well, let's let's figure this out. Um, would anybody want to join uh, Raldar in there right now, given everything that's transpired? Oh, hearing none. Uh, I'm. Let's keep going down the rest of the list and figure out where everybody is at the moment. Um, so let's see. Uh, Kresik, where would the good doctor be right now? What would he be doing as, uh, you know, everyone um, is back? So he would be on the transporter pad. Um, he'd probably try to move the body into sickbay so that he could figure out what killed him, if you can find any information off of uh, off of Dikoth's body. Okay. We can make that its own scene here in a moment. Um, Azik, uh, what would you be... 
Uh, what? Where would you be at the moment? Azek would be heading to the bridge to uh, get with Vopri to see if we can um, scan the vicinity for uh, the captain. Okay, we can definitely arrange that. Um, and then, Traven, uh, what are you tending to? I'm going with Azek so I can help Vopri with the scans. All right. Well, I think that um, we've got a few things in order here right now, so I suppose... Um, tell you what, I will give you guys the option here. We can either play that in order to where we run each of those scenes um, as it was, um, or we can basically do our narrative initiative uh, roll-off to where um, I'd say, since... They're in three different places. Uh, Kresik, Raldar, Azik, uh, players behind them will take a roll of a single d20 and we will go in turn order. Or we'll go in the order of lowest roll. I'm fine waiting. I'm in no rush for the scene. Okay. So I'll... Just have it as a roll-off then between Araldar and Azik. Uh, Joe, could you go ahead and give me a single d20 roll, please? Okay. Uh, looks like it will be them first, so if you're good to wait for a moment there, uh, Kaliga, we'll pick up with the engineer in a moment here. Uh, yeah, gotcha. Yep, so let us pick up on the bridge then uh, make sure that oh uh, let's see well Tabak definitely isn't there right now so let's get him off the bridge but what if he was well even if he was Dakoth is not okay that's true but what if he was well then uh it would be really weird to uh that'd be ship of the dead Levels of weird, I suppose, except for I guess the cough wouldn't be in a coffin, or his coffin wouldn't be mounted outside, it would be the coffin. God damn it! Sorry, no, no, that's good. Here, have a momentum. <laughs> Yay! Hey, I did it. Keep doing it. Yeah. It'll, it'll be on the part of the ship that gets uh, that Azic accidentally connects with something else in the future. And yet, because of his precise piloting, only the ribs will break. <laughs> so, uh, yep. Uh, Azik, Traven, the two of you uh, make your way onto the bridge. Uh, oh, right. We need to scan as far as we can for signs of the captain. Uh, during the firefight down there, we... Um, he was... He, I, out of character, he was hit, right? And then he disappeared? You don't actually know what happened to the captain. Um, okay. Only Dakoth was present, and he never got word to the rest of the players before he died. Gotcha. Okay. So. Um, but um, Zional did give y'all the codes for the transponder that he hid on the captain's body at some right. point in time. We need to zero in on that transponder code if we can. Um, for the captain in the area. I I will attempt to engage main sensors. Although I I must say, um, the it, well, I it can't account for everything. If the if the captain were dead, then the uh, this code would not respond if it were vaporized. Even without that, though, uh, the scanner, uh, main scanners will not be fully operational until main power is fully restored. We had Redirect. Oh, go ahead. Uh, we had system, uh, I had systems largely on stand-down capacity. We routed uh, power to uh, 
power to reinforce targeting sensors for the transporters. How long will it take to reroute power back to the to the main sensors for this this task? Well, it could probably be uh, completely reset with uh, once we have a main reactor going. But I I could still attempt a sensor scan, just with a little bit more difficulty. Uh, proceed as much as I'm. As much as I'm eager to sit in that captain's chair, um, today is not a good day for a promotion. So let's let's find our captain. I walk over uh, and pat Vopride on the shoulder. I'll help you out this time. Okay. Uh, attempting a reason plus science roll. Uh, Traven, if you would like to assist with... A single D20 using that discipline and focus. Um, mm. The yarn could also assist with sensors plus science. May I use my sensors focus? That would apply. <laughs> also, sensors is the greatest focus in the game. It is a pretty solid focus. Oh dear, Traven's, uh, Traven's, uh, one success he got there, uh, that is, there's some eldritch stuff going on with that sheet there. <laughs> yeah, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> false plus false equals one. Come on. <laughs> Come on, man. Would anyone you know like things. to roll for the ship? That would be sensors plus science, please. If no one else has got it, I got it. Give me a sec. It shall be you, then. I believe in you. I was muted. Fair enough. But yeah. Somebody else like got it. Captain. It's okay. <laughs> Whomever can get to it first. Sensors and what? Science, please. I think it's pronounced science. I, you know, I was going to say go to hell. I've sent you to uh, Grethor <laughs> once, and I'll send you back again. I'll do it again. And the name of your destroyer shall be... Moopsie. <laughs> <laughs> Joke's on Moopsie. My symbiote don't have bones. But the trill most definitely do. Unless they're not made out of calcium. Uh, I, I I think they have bones. And even then, it's really just like a, a sufficient calcium concentration there. Anyway, neither here nor there. Uh, the three successes that you scored will not be enough to succeed here. As Vopri looks over the telemetry. I am... I am not picking up any signs of this transponder code anywhere. May I use a value? Uh, not when you are assisting, unfortunately. Shucks. Yes, I, I am sorry. I, I cannot detect the captain anywhere. Oh. Uh, are are I, I do have I, I must ask honestly are are we safe where we are of course we are Klingons you are Klingon and so was uh, so was Dakoth and Kelsha but that did not stop them from coming under threat. And wait, where where is Wool? She's gone. Also, Vopri. As a matter of fact, we need to scan for her too. 
Vopra just blanches further at that. Uh, like, he is pale even by his own uh, snowy, white, sinewy standards, and he just kind of shrivels down in a stare. Uh, I'll okay. bet my right arm we're going to be fine. Do the scan. I, 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 you won't, you Vopri, won't. Vopri, listen to me. We're fine. You need to pull yourself together. Our captain is missing, and so is our chief of security. And at this moment, right now, they need us. We can't be dawdling. We can't be worrying. This is serious. I know you can pull yourself together because you were chosen by the captain. You've got this. We've got this. Run the scans. See what we can do, okay? I, 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 I will try. Vopri will turn back to the sensors and start running sensor scans for any signs of uh, woe either on the surface or uh, of indeed any Kazinti life signs that show up in orbit right now. Uh, as that will take a little bit of time, I think we'll call this the moment where there's a slight suspenseful swell of music and take this down to engineering... Uh, so that we can join in with uh, Raldar. Uh, let's see. So, our Gorn engineer, we follow in as the doors open to the reactor pit, and you find yourself entering the uh, engine room. Everything is largely powered down uh, there are still there's still base illumination and some consoles are active however uh, the warp reactors are presently not uh, being run as you've been picking up the remains of the uh, necessary refueling the only one uh, otherwise to join you here is uh, Kelsha the older woman um, who had also came from uh, while well, she had Come with you from Galidon too, along with Dakoth, of course. Um, just before we kick off the scene here, would anybody be interested in tapping her as a supporting character? Phrasing. See, Captain, do it. Oh. Seeing none, uh, the. I will just go ahead and NPC her for the scene. So, uh, Raldar, you step through, and Kelsha appears to be just running some basic diagnostics and say, Oh. You're yeah, back a little earlier than I thought. Oh. Yeah. We had problems. Oh. Dear, oh dear. Well, hopefully problems that are all dealt with. Or uh, do we have need to give further battle? There's a good chance there will be further battle. Hmm. Well, I suppose then we will have to get the uh, we'll have to get the ship into battle condition. I'll begin power up sequence the main reactor and we'll disconnect the umbilicals um, you can tell uh, well I'll do what I can to help and we'll make sure that we are in fighting shape for the captain that's it good good uh, Raldor, you want me to roll on yes, for that give me a control plus engineering roll One. With a single success, you begin entering in the necessary commands to start up the ship's reactor sequence. As it does, I am going to spend two points of threat. Oh boy. The computers immediately begin spitting out... Well, at first you think they're errors, but then you find that with the uh, as you try to engage the startup sequence... The computer is outright refusing to acknowledge your commands. 
Oh. Mm. I see. <laughs> I see. I guess I need to investigate the computer for. <laughs> uh, as you say this, uh, Kelshaw's like, uh, my engineering console's not responding. Ah, infernal machine. Uh, this isn't right. <laughs> as you peruse further, you find that there is a prompt for a message left behind. A prompt for a message. Do you attempt to access it? Yeah. Uh, yes. Okay. A message on every com on every computer monitor screen on the ship. Tabox face shows up. Attention, cr attention, crew of the Yan. You are trying to go somewhere without my immediate presence on board the ship. This will not do. This ship is mine and is the property of my house. If I am not here and you are trying to take off, there are only a few possibilities. First, I am dead. If that is so, then this ship will join me in my house. Two, you have abandoned me. This is almost to be expected, although I would have thought that some of you would have done something to prevent it. Three, you are pirates attempting to steal my ship. This will not happen. There are so many interlocks in place throughout this entire ship, preventing it from taking off that you will never find them all. This is my ship. I hope you enjoy having a hulk all around you. My ship will not go anywhere without me. And then it blanks off. Aaron Hoyt Captain. Yeah. Uh, this likewise has played elsewhere around the ship. So, your uh, the sensor scans that were being run aboard the uh, or run from uh, the bridge have all been interrupted by this. Uh, likewise, on any display that uh, Kresik was passing in the sick bay. Um, those are now, uh, rather, that announcement was also played over that. Indeed, I imagine that it broadcasts through the entire um, intercom system. Lovely. Yeah. Uh, that being said, um, with the, with the spend on the complication there, uh, power to most systems uh, appears to be uh, non-functional at present. Engines, weapons, uh, sensors might be partially operational. Uh, sick bay remains completely untouched or okay. Um, and like ba some basic lighting and environmental functions are still functioning throughout the ship, such as you have them active right now. So, I see. So, Raldar, what is your first inclination right now? First inclination? Really hope the cast's not dead. <laughs> that's, a, no, that's the first thing there. Uh, curse his name for this, and then... <laughs> just how disrupted the power was when that happened. See if we still have things like the transporters and hopefully the sensors will get back up. <laughs> mm. I gotcha, I gotcha. Uh, let's see here. 
Sorry, just going back over some of the notes I set up. And also, I may as well take some friendly input. Uh, how much of that Tabak would you say is still uh, operational right now? Life support, the galley, uh, sick bay. Sensors were low priority. Uh, uh, currently off, but I'm pretty sure they could probably get them going again. Transporters def are high priority, definitely not working. Might Still might be able to get those going, but lots of workarounds. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, well, we'll revisit more of that here in a moment, I suppose, while we are getting this sorted out. Uh, would you guys like the opportunity to check in on how everyone's, uh, well... I was going to say on how everyone's favorite captain is going, but opinions may have shifted just a little bit in the uh, in the interim, I suppose. Let's sure. see what he's up to. We'll see what uh, does he stop our boys doing. Yep. yep. Okay. Uh, let's see here. It's moving that around here. Uh, so, Tabak, um, as you, uh, as your thoughts uh, regain their composure, um, you feel the imposing cold of the deck plating beneath you. Oh dear, you find yourself prone upon the surface of the deck plating. There's a thrum to the hull, and... Uh, suggesting an operational EPS power grid, what you would think to be artificial gravity, an engine somewhere at work. But otherwise, very little to uh, give you a complete sense of where you are and what is going on. Wait, I am back to where I was before? Indeed. With the foggy walls and all the rest of that. Yes. Am I still slightly crispy around the edges? You find no signs of burns on your arms or legs or any, really anywhere. Hmm. How much would Tabak know? about species that are telepathic. He is well-traveled. That is one of his uh, well, defining characteristics here. That's one of his... There are uh, definitely stories uh, far and wide about various species yeah. that have executed um, various types of telepathy. Um, at this point, having more fully adopted the philosophy of Surak. Uh, the Vulcans are openly known for a fair bit of telepathy. Um, you know, I think I'd actually maybe ask for a reason plus command role to see just how far you go on this, or how obscure Tabak's knowledge would be. Coming up. Oh, well, with three successes on that roll, um, I oh, was... you know what? My my talent would have actually, I think, widely traveled. Uh, uh, that. Hold on a minute. Take What's a quick look. Mission. No, it doesn't give me any. It gives me interesting knowledge or skills. It doesn't give me any information. Never mind. Well, suffice to say, as successful as you were, you would have a pretty good idea that there are some species known to employ telepathy. Uh, Vulcans are one that, at this point, has come to be fairly well known. Or there's uh, no taboo around the mind meld or anything of the sort. Uh, there are 
some other species that are either known or at least believed to have it. Uh, you may have picked up some references to um, a particular uh, group that are employed sometimes as mercenaries, like the Lethians. They are known to use a sort of telepathy, though they are uh, rare throughout the Empire. Likewise, there is rumor of a uh, of some sort of very reclusive set of humanoids somewhere out further in what uh, whatever the Klingon designation would be for the Alpha Quadrant is, um, which the Empire just barely kind of stretches to on its or comes close to on its uh, like furthest galactic western fringes. They definitely have the influence out there, but. Uh, the what you know of the empire would uh well there's not a lot in terms of telepathic species that frequent the empire so it's not like i can't say there's anything that would come to you as very common everything you know is more through story and association rather than any sort of personal experience or encounters but i know that they exist Yes, <clears throat> Tabak is not completely in the dark on that. All right. Would there be any... technology that could infiltrate his mind that he might know about? I mean, Klingons have the mind sifter, but I'm never. they've never really de decided how that actually works. Mm. As you ponder that notion, the walls, uh, the walls around you and the door once again seem to take up that illumination. Well. Interesting. And Durant, have you come back again to play stupid games? You are met with silence first. Going there again and attempting to find an edge of a panel near the door that I might open up? I have oh. tried that many a time. Not with any uh, luck. Uh, I must say you are a new feature here. Is she speaking Klingon? She is. All right. <clears throat> Okay, I just got another message on Twitch that the broadcast has ended. Yep, yep. It's it seems to be happening again. There is some issue either with Twitch itself or with uh, OBS right now. I cannot account for why it is crashing here. It's moopy. The moopsy. It, the I. It's in the machinery. All right. Yeah. <laughs> or no, it was Moogie, wasn't it? Moogie was. Uh the Klingon, or the Ferengi mom. Yes, but I, yes. I, can't, I can't imagine why she would do that. This is such a lucrative opportunity. It's at least entertaining. But yes. Uh, in the corner, there appears to sit a... Um, sitting kind of slumped against the wall. There appears to be a woman... Um, she, uh, like she could have a Klingon bearing. If so, it would be a Kuchawi, or rather a Kucha. Yeah, not the uh, not the other sort. That would give her more of a discovery look. Uh, Who yes. are you? Oh. I could ask you the same thing, given as you show up in my cell unannounced. I think you showed up in my cell unannounced. Oh, well, then we have a bit of a dilemma, don't we? Uh, 
ignore her and go back to searching for something I can pry open. While keeping an ear open to see if she comes any closer and tries to attack me. Yep. There'll be no such uh, no such venture on her part as uh, she just kind of leans back a little bit. Uh, my name is Mindel. Mindel? Mindel. Of what house? Bold of you to assume I'm from a house. My line is scarcely of any note anyway. Why are you here? Well, I honestly don't have as, uh, any... I don't know. Right, that's where, where is here? You're I asking... mean, he's still he's asking these questions while he's still trying to find, you know, something to open. Yep. Uh, as your search continues, uh, Captain, she just answers. Uh, I have uh, I have no sense of where we are, why we are here, and who is responsible for this. And Where you were, were you before here? <laughs> before here, I was just on an, uh, out on an outpost. Uh, trading station, I think. Uh, you had some interesting types come through. House, uh, people from houses, uh, Imperial Navy. Sometimes you'd get some more roguish characters. On what world? It wasn't a world, it was just a simple station out in deep space. Or for refueling and the occasional uh, market linkage. How long have you been here? I really don't know at this point, and you are asking an awful lot of questions for somebody that refuses to answer mine. I am Tabak of the House of Cord. Now I have answered your question. Oh, well, I suppose I should start thinking of some. That or those damned eyes, Will. At that, he pauses for a second and turns around and looks at her. He's trying to get a read on her. He doesn't trust her. So... Have you met them yet yourself? Yes, the eyes. They set me on fire. Oh. Though I show... Though I show none of my burns. She just raises both eyebrows and nods at that. Oh, I see, I see. They started light for you, then. I'm sorry, they started what? They started light for you, then. Hmm. Again, I'm trying to get a read on her. Uh, like, see if she's just trying to see if she's lying or anything, or dissembling in any way. Uh, would you... What would I roll for that? I think insight and command would work. Security would also apply. I'm sure I know what you are going to pick. Well, security with our is slightly better than it used to be. <laughs> nice. This is good. Yes. All those training um, sessions, all those broken bones with Whoa finally paid off. Yes. Yes. Thank you for the uh, the bone regenerator treatments. Uh, so yeah, I will attempt that. Two dice. I don't think I have any. Foci, which would apply at all. Except maybe Orion business practices. Um. <laughs> I don't think that would work here. Alright, well. 
Let us see what the dice gods say. All right. Uh, that is two successes. Um, from the features you read on her face, she doesn't appear to be giving any... Um, you can't pick up any sort of tell or anything but the you know, fairly earnest uh, expression of somebody who would seem to be truthful. Um, you don't know necessarily that she's telling you everything. Indeed, she delayed for a while and giving you her name or like doing too much in the way of specifics. Uh, you have only been given like the most general sort of notions of who she is. So, mm -hmm. as give... just as basically, I've only told her my name, yes. but you know, I have woken up here twice in darkness, and now there's suddenly somebody in the room, and so, he's suspicious. What about you, Tabak of the House of Kord? I, I can't say I've heard of that one before. Are Not a some... surprise. Are you some sort of uh lesser uh, sword nobility of some sort uh, fighting at the beck and call of your uh, uh, of your great house lord's whims or okay a, a real quick question um, aside from being a uh, her clothing does it look like a imperial navy uniform it does not. It appears to be civilian garb. Okay. Condition of the clothing. Say like, is it is it condition of the clothing? Like, is it soiled and torn like she's been wearing it for a while? Like, what's her hair look like? Is it all frizzy and going all over the place? Or does she still look really good with that, you know, that smear of gelatin on the lens to make her kind of glow? <laughs> uh, maybe a few hairs out of place uh, but she doesn't seem to have either like the signs of like long term issues in terms of like hygiene the clothes look weathered from perhaps like extended use but not of the sort that would suggest that like it's become excessively ratty or anything from long bits of captivity all right, and she's not showing any wounds, but then I'm not showing any wounds either. Indeed not. We are a lesser house, but we are a strong house. Oh, I'm, I'm sure you are. And that's what got you caught up here, isn't it? That and being attacked by half a dozen fools from uh, where I don't know. Well, well, if half a dozen of them were able to ambush you, then they don't seem... It doesn't seem like their tactics are all that foolish, does it? I didn't say their tactics were foolish. Just them. Hmm. Well, such is, uh, I suppose, how this, uh, how this works, I... Guess you've crossed at least one person, so maybe that'll give some insight when it inevitably comes by to ask that damned set of questions. It asked me one question. I did not answer. Well, that explains the fire. Oh. With your search nearly seemingly complete on the panels, Tabok, um and your attention momentarily flitting to the door as it catches a glint of uh, bright yellow. From eyes once again meeting your uh, gaze. Who ah, are the you? eyes have returned. Who are you? Apparently your enemy. Who do you work for? A man by the name of Nunya. Whom do you work for? I, 
I shouldn't get involved with this, but who's Nunya? I don't know that Nun- house either. Nunya business. Choose your pain. Go eat vacuum. Grant it. Oh, I really, really wish, uh, Mindu says, that you had chosen those words just the slightest bit more carefully. And there is a sudden roar as the surround, uh, as suddenly the air in the room is pulled out in quick succession the compartment is being vented um, she's uh, the koha at uh sitting in the corner begins to like frantically try exhaling as uh, air rapidly runs out tabak uh what are you doing in this moment here yeah i clear out the lungs and as anybody who's been in space knows and just try to stare out the door as the pressure drops and the temperature drops just as rapidly mm-hmm. before I will eventually die or pass out. All right. Just to see how successful... Well, you know, just to see how quickly you're able to act on that versus how fast the atmosphere is being vented, give me a fitness and pl- uh, medicine roll, please. <laughs> Thanks. Fitness and medicine. Okay. Difficulty on this is two. <laughs> uh, Need a die, right. okay. take a die. Oh, look at that. I actually made it. All right, you... Good God. <laughs> that was a rough roll there. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, cool. I needed eight and or less for that one. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> and I did it. Mindu, for her part, is at least a little better statted, and she's able to quickly exhale. Uh, yeah, Tabak, you have, you know, mere moments before the, uh, before you lose consciousness. Is there anything that you would like to try and do with the little bit of time you have before you lose your senses? The Klingon version of flipping a bird at the eyeballs in the hallway. Very well. You give it the appropriately vulgar gesture for the situation, and the eyes just glow yellow, steadily coming out of focus as the lack of oxygen in the room begins to uh, cause you to hallucinate, or the buildup in CO- of CO2 in your blood begins to uh, cause Wait. you to fade. Oh, then, never mind. Go ahead. Yep, and... Uh, yeah, with that, we close out that scene. We join Dr. Kresik down in the sick bay, where the body of uh, the captain's former bodyguard, a fairly young Klingon Kulhach male um, by the name of Dakoth, uh, someone that you had rescued both from potential servitude and from... Um, uh, that you had brought along with you from the colony on Galidon 2 um, has uh, been... Uh, you've brought him down from the transporter room. Uh, the Klingons have kind of left the body at this point with you know seeing him as no more than a broken shell by their tradition. And uh, yeah, Kresik, he is... All uh, what remains of him is yours now. All right. So I think the first thing that I would do is um, just do a a um, passive examination of like, okay, did they? Is he missing anything? Like, was this somebody that robbed him? Did they take? anything from him that kind of a a first passive glance would be the first thing that he would do 
the body. Okay. Such that he was carrying anything on him that you were aware of, the only things that seem to be missing off of Dakoth right now would appear to be weapons that he was carrying. Now, you are uncertain whether this is by virtue of somebody having taken them, or perhaps they were lost in the heat of combat, uh, but he still has his wrist communicator. He might have a few other uh, small items in his pockets. He might have even had something with the few uh, like physical darseks rattling around. I'm not sure whether the Klingons keep a hard currency of some sort. I would imagine coinage, if anything, but I don't know. GM needs to think on that. Okay. Cash will always exist for those transactions that need to occur outside of government agency. But, like, his dictog is missing, too, then, when it comes to weapons. Um, I do think that he had lost that, yes. Okay. He did. He did. He threw it at the guy. But Yeah, that's right. But Kresik wouldn't know that. Yeah. Okay. So, no weapons. All other physical, belong personal belongings are accounted for. Yeah. Okay. He was beamed up before the vultures got to him. Okay. Um... I would like to do a start doing some scans on him now. See what like obvi obviously I can see like I, I can't remember did he get shot or did he get stabbed. Um, so I will ask you a uh, a bit of both. I think that he was actually it was more of a pommel strike and then a shot. <laughs> Okay, so so I would definitely see that he had been shot. Yes, there is a good okay. size disruptor wound in, right in his gut. Okay. Yeah, the Mark One um, eyeball will tell you that. Exactly. Exactly. Um, I can assume that that's what cause of death was. Mm -hmm. Yep. That said, a uh, reason plus medicine roll will give you the remaining insight. That's what I was going to ask. Yep, and because. Not all of the ship is against you. You may use sensors plus medicine to help you as well. Excellent. Um, so, Kresik is going to walk back into his into his little uh, little study here. Um, he's going to go to his chest. Open it up. He pulls out all of his stuff. He pulls out his Gorn size scanner. Um, and then he pulls out a syringe. Nasty looking big ol' syringe. Um, because it wasn't his abilities as a doctor that led to his patient dying. It was his poor choice in decisions. He chose to rest instead of act. Uh, and he needs to correct that. Uh, he needs to be better than that. Uh, so he is going to take that syringe line it up very carefully with one of the scars around his eye and he's just going to inject it straight into one of those scars directly into the ocular nerve um, as he is reactivating some of the more dangerous enhancements that he had tested upon himself before a long time ago. Um, Ooh, this... And with that, 
he's going to head back because I took the enhanced ability reason talent uh, as one of my upgrades. Okay. Uh... Which means that each success counts as an additional success. But also, my um, complication range is increased by two for any reason rolls. I see, I see. Uh, would any of my focuses apply? Mm, I would say... Uh, I, I regret to inform you, uh, paranormal phenomena is not coming into play. I can't speak to the ghost of Takoth? Come on. Come on. You, you, you think you can, but that, that's really not what you're seeing. That's, that's just side effects. I guess pharmacology is giving you an advantage here, so... Okay. It doesn't, strictly speaking, help with the task. Uh, well, rather, it's not... Uh, it isn't directly relevant to the task, but yeah, I'll, I'll give that to you this one time. It's too good to pass up. So, reason and medicine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that is four successes. That it is. You, uh, as your eyes just dart about at a pace uh, the reptilian uh, slits of your irises kind of or pupils closing in for as effective as your sensors are your eyes may as well be the only thing that need to do it or that would be that would be what comes across to an audience watching this as you glance over every wound you see the exact spread of the disruptor uh, the like as it swirled about and interacted with the flesh as it melted through and um, just completely scrambled organs and bones it did indeed uh, seem to melt or partially disintegrate some ribs in the process as is fitting um, unfortunate you, Yes, yes. Um, and that was indeed the final shock that uh, eh, that had killed Dakoth. He was probably capable of being rescued before that point, but the injury was... Uh, it targeted entirely too many of the vital organs and just caught, uh, caused a rapid shock both to, uh, like, the... Not just to the vital organs, but to the neurological system that quickly sent uh, Dakoth into a spiral that uh, his brain would not be able to recover from. Uh, not without uh, the quickest of intervention. Exactly. If he had been there, he could have made a difference. Mm -hmm. Dakoth could still be alive. Yeah. I would go so far as to say that from this you would also gain that the disruptor was calibrated in such a way to uh, you'd probably say at a nearly a minimum level, uh, level of what was necessary to be lethal. You know that Klingons uh, are capable of adjusting that and dealing varying levels of maiming wounds all the way up to outright disintegration. This was meant to be a death not too long or not something where the shot would leave him time to walk away, just enough to bring him down and to give him those few moments to meditate before uh, or before he'd passed. Now, likewise, you can note signs of uh, other melee strikes that would suggest a cough might have been able to close the distance with his foe, but between that, between some muscle strains, uh, you can guess that some blade work was in play, and that despite his best efforts, he was disarmed, he was probably 
struck, likely knocked down at least once before that initial blow. But he didn't give up. Dakoth himself might have had a choice as to continue fighting or not. Fools. Always running to their deaths. Um, couple questions. How many successes did I need for that roll? You only needed the one, so you get you take three points of momentum on that. Excellent. Um, I would like to spend one point for obtain information, and then I will take it away. Uh, Klingon disruptors. Definitely. Though okay. a model common enough that um, you would not suspect it to be like military model or military grade, it is more likely one of the numerous private entities, i.e. Uh, one of the houses or an exceptionally well-paid uh, mercenary group. Gotcha. And then I'm wondering if I could spend two, my other two, to create an advantage. What type and of advantage are you looking for? Here was my thought. Um, as Kresik is going over the scans and seeing that this was not it wasn't an ambush this was a fight this was a deliberate drawn out fight and Dekoth was a bodyguard with an assignment to protect the captain I would like to create the advantage that Dekoth recorded in his on his wrist comms the events that happened. Hmm. If the group putting is... those pieces together and saying that Dekoth would not have gone down without a fight, and he would not have gone down without doing everything that he could to protect the captain, including leaving clues on his own body. I I very much like that pitch. How would the rest of you feel? Let's do I'm it. good with it. I'm good with it. So, you know, it's just audio, and there's probably a lot of background noise and stuff, too, but... Yep. Yep. Um, so I'd say that... Uh, it might have been Dekoth attempted to gain some sort of, uh, or tried to signal the crew, but uh, perhaps something with the communicator miscued, or perhaps his attention was otherwise diverted by the combat, but you pick up the screams of someone on the tail end uh, screaming, Find me, Tabak. Um, and the beginnings of disruptor bolts that were hurling about. You pick up the uh, bits of the exchange as it sounds as though um, numerous bolts were flying and that there was some sort of combat in place. You note that it seems to stop after um, the... Uh, or after a point when it sounds as though whoever the particularly angry Klingon was on the other end seems to have considered his task done, which given the ire regarding Tabak would suggest something most dreadful. Dakoth, uh, by all accounts, seems to continue the battle based on the proximity of the Disruptor Bolts as you listen in, as your fine-tuned senses allow you to pick up the vague flow of battle that Dakoth's weapon continued to go off and that 
Eventually, he tried to join a melee with this, uh, with this other Klingon, but that in spite of numerous attempts, he was just outmatched. When he threw, uh, whether throwing daggers, whether, uh, taking a slash with a sword, or trying to continue the battle no matter how he could, eventually Dakoth was just thoroughly spent. After perhaps his last attack with the dagger, successfully managing to hit whoever his target was, that brought about the Disruptor Blast, which ended his life. All right. So with that, I don't think there's any more information that I can get off of this body. I just... I cover it for now. I don't have time to deal with it. We don't have time to deal with it. Uh, and I'll go and I'll slam one of the wall communicators. Kresik to whoever is in charge here. Say for our purposes that this is a, uh, we'll call it a likely, uh, priority locations for the intercom so this is going out to the bridge and to the engine room unless you would prefer it to be ship wide he just slammed the button ship wide he slammed ship-wide. the button he uses to talk to people yep is nobody uh, in charge here who's going to answer Did we determine who should answer? As I got the, I think it should be you. Oh, okay. Yeah, what's up, Doc? I have some information from the costs. All right. Uh, give me a minute. I will be down there in shortly. Um, we should meet somewhere to discuss what to do next. Or do you right. have a plan? <laughs> I, I have a plan in the palm of my right hand. Uh, let's... Real, real quick, if I may. Uh, Raldar, you are also on this line right now so uh with azik asserting uh, some sort of leadership or control and with uh Kresik apparently having some information on this are you uh would you have anything to interject here no gotcha gotcha so uh keep going then joe All right, so out of out of character, we've got information that the doc has. We've got information that the, the one person that uh, uh, Vopri picked up. Uh, the one chick is coming to try to take. No, that was that was an automated message, wasn't it? From from. The captain. Yes, that was an automated message. Gotcha. All right. Best place to do this is at the bridge. Uh, why don't we have uh, senior staff report to the bridge? Um, let's talk here. Uh, that way, Vopri can continue scanning, and uh, any immediate information will be ready to go. I am on the way. Okay. As you leave that area, I have uh, two other people to ask that of. Um, 
one just for japes for a moment. Um, Crow Kerr, bearing in mind that uh, Tabak was not with his bodyguard and that his bodyguard was beamed back dead from a uh, from a site er, from a site somewhere on the planet. Um, are you taking the acknowledgement of senior staff only, or are you, uh, in the current schedule flux, are you promoting yourself in this circumstance? Oh. Hey there, Ray. Who's there? Oh, having Hang some... Hang on. Yeah, just having some Ooh. slight audio issues there. Uh, incidentally, I... we are hangoing on. <laughs> yes, yes. We are pleased to say that we are joined by our um, our player for Woe Israel tonight. Uh, Israel tonight, and uh, yeah, just trying to get some technical issues sorted out. Um. I'll, you know, I will, if you can hear this, uh, Ray, we'll let that be a surprise. As oh, to... I'm, I'm here. Okay, I have good. made it. Excellent. Uh, yes. Hi. All right. Yes. Croker will, will be joining. Excellent. Well, we'll cover that in a moment. Uh, we'll let you, let you burst onto the bridge. Uh, before that, uh, back down in the reactor pit. Uh, Raldar, oh are you also going to uh, go up to the bridge to hear out whatever Krasik has to say? Yeah. Yeah, I'll, I'll hear him out. Okay. So, as you turn from the uh, console, which you have been working at to little avail right now, your eyes meet with Kelsha. What did he mean? <laughs> Dekoth's body. Uh, we uh, attempted to recover him. He is in Stovacore now. She'll close her eyes and cast down her head for a moment. And there'll be just a moment of silence. And then she will attempt to put her hand through the panel that is immediately nearest her. Wait, that should be two on the dice there. Uh, the paddle and uh, the panel does not yield, though it does flicker for a moment. He died a good death, I'm sure. Then we will avenge him. And I should be, uh, in the future, I should be made to know such losses happen. I'll try to keep you more informed than Kelsha. She nods and just uh, goes back to her console trying to get it to respond. And you make your way up to the bridge. So, back on the bridge. Uh, let's see. The initial party is beginning to swell. Um, I guess just to say that people are there, um, obviously main characters will be present such as they are available, so Kresik will be on the bridge very shortly. He would have the uh, next easiest walk. Um, past that, would for, kick, uh, for kicks and giggles, would you like to say that anyone else is about? Like, even if, he, if they're not doing anything actively, let's say... Uh, Rev, would you want Zionel slinking in the background? Or... He's picking his teeth in the corner with a dagger, sure. Yes! I gotcha. so, so sexy! Leaning 
<laughs> okay, <laughs> sure. A, a it is! You can find me on that. Yep. Uh, let's see. Uh, the the Nostican Bahad will also be present. Um, and... Okay. And once My again, Twitch OBS is crashed. It's, My it's Twitch not... is... I'm sorry to interrupt. My Twitch appears to have crashed entirely because all I'm still see- yeah, it ended again. It is not your Twitch's fault. It is my OBS for reasons I do not understand. So it's your old BS. <laughs> Couldn't help it. Sorry. Hey, that's this is done Star it now. Trek, this is Star Trek Adventures BS. It um, is true. Yes, yes. No, that's that's why the meme is there. Uh, let's see. I'm going to see if I can get this to reset. Oh, once again, the archives will not be plagued. There, we are. We are back live on Twitch. So, uh, sorry, folks. We're having some technical issues uh, at the moment again. Uh, once again, if you're watching this in the archive, it will not be affected. But um, yeah, we're we're just going to have to deal with that as best we can. Um, so let's see uh, Kresik you arrive onto the bridge where you see that uh, there appears to be a few people congregating not everybody in what might have been considered the uh, quote unquote senior staff Bahan is here a, a mug of blood wine at his side now uh, Zionel that uh that small, kind of unseemly quartermaster has entered the scene. Um, so you were stepping into uh, the... I would imagine that there is a burst of a presence from behind you as uh, Croker also rushes in. I will say... Uh, I see so much bigger. Thank you. Yep. Uh, Croker, you do know that Zionel made it off the planet alive, or rather from the settlement you are still on the planet right now because uh, you had uh, beamed him Azik, Raldar and Traven back to the ship without any problem uh, but yeah the otherwise you know that Dekoth is uh, Dekoth is dead Woe and uh, Tabak are both missing right now alright uh he bursts through the door. Any updates? Where is he? I, Can't get the scanners online. I, I I do not have any more information on that right now. I am I am sorry. We're working uh, on it. He punches a wall. Not good enough. God dang it! Or whatever the fucking things Klingon say. Yeah. Uh, can I roll to see if I can get Betty into the system? Oh dear, oh dear, you you may certainly try. Um, <laughs> although I think that the captain's security protocols are not going to be a fan of that. Well, I don't care. Let's see what she can do. Oh god. Uh, Let's see. There's yeah. going to be She's a... doing this on the bridge? Where are we again? We're on the bridge? Yep. We are on the bridge. Perfect. So this would be daring plus engineering. Yay. Difficulty on going. this is I'm going to set it up to four and I'm going to expend three points of threat to increase the complication range to How three. dare you? Let me see. Do I oh, have any? How dares. dare you? Can I give you some Jeez. more threat so you can spend some more to increase the complication range? Why would you do that? I'm trying to help us. <laughs> Funny. I, I, I will give you two additional D20s for a future spend for that. If Thank you. you. So. Okay. Uh, complication range is uh, now up to... Actually, wait. Complication range should now be up to uh, four. I th yeah, complication range should be up to four. There's no way I'm going to... Oh, you sons of bitches. We have a momentum. Seriously? One? We're four. And that is a 19 on the die, so uh, that was actually what? a complication there. Um, what? 
Yeah. What do you what mean? You, you, roll you just hear... Oh, my God. Okay. I have to ask now. You just... Um, okay. Narrative, please. Okay. Um, Can we get ahead. rid of it? I mean, you, what? you could you could buy off the complication if you so wish. There is no, 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 no. I, I I'm here to cause problems. I'm not here to help them. All right. Give, give not me a your, hero. Uh, give me your initial uh, reaction there. Uh, after he punches the wall, Crooker slams his fist into uh, the sensor panel, and you just hear Betty shout, "Not so hard! That wasn't comfortable at all." What do you think you're made of? And she just projects out of his face. It's okay. It's going to be all right. Let me do what I can. And she tries to go into the system. Yep. The panel that she attempts to interact with blows out on the spot. And Betty, you feel the equivalent of being slammed, uh, your face getting slammed into a wall and then being pushed backwards against another wall very hard. I, I would say mental damage. You just hear like a weird shrill and then sh you see her glitch over and Krukur falls back because it actually affects him as well. Yep, yep. Uh, Tabak, did you have a uh, did you have an attention Bajoran workers moment for an intrusive computer system? Uh, huh. That will not avail you. The system, the system is so, is so, well, so protected. well protected. There are computer, there are computer and, and physical, physical interlocks, interlocks in, place. in place. There are so many of them, you will not find them all. And then it blanks off again. This is the most Jurassic Park bullshit. Yep. Oh, okay. Ah, ah, ah. Yep. Uh, okay. Uh, uh. Yep, and with that, Rawlbar I like that you all got it. Okay. Yeah. There, there are raised voices. There's probably a a Vopri shriveling in the corner a little bit, uh, apologizing for not being able to catch scans. Um, that quartermaster is uh, picking at his teeth. With the, uh, I presume. I don't know. Was Zinal speed more knives with it, or does he have a nice toothpick? Uh, it's like one of those stilettos. Mm. It's just like a really, really fine pointed uh, dagger. Copy that, copy that. The kind that you stab in and then break off inside somebody. Very God, good. that's hot. Okay. <laughs> yep. Uh, but yeah, the, the bridge is steadily becoming chaos between all of that. I think that uh, there might be a yowl or two from... Um, from Cheshire at this point just to add to the chaos. This is what I found on Takoth. And he throws well, hands because he almost throws, throws it, but then he considers against it. And he hands the wrist communicator to Azek, since he's the one who answered when he asked who was in charge. Um, so that he can play it and hear everything that happened uh, that was recorded. Uh, and then after that plays, he just says, whoever killed him and harmed or did whatever they did to the captain. Were Klingon. And they knew who the captain was. And this is, this port is a, a, Klingon port, right? It is. Okay. Debatably Klingon, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Zeth lore is definitely on the fringe of the Empire, and they 
barely <laughs> exert any influence out here. It's very rare that you would see a uh, an imperial vessel out here. That being said, um, a lot of the houses like to keep at least a shadowy presence around here, um, in part to be able to hire the large number of Klingon mercenaries that are about the planet. Uh, it's also a prime location to negotiate or uh, enter into agreements with the Orion Syndicate, other criminal elements. Uh, it's probably a decent rating point for some Federation worlds, or at least along the disputed zone uh, that constitutes a large bit of the Klingon Federation border of the day. Oh, Pry, this is a long shot. Scan for other Imperial ships. I, I, I will conduct scans. I, I did not see any in orbit on our pre approach scan. Yeah. So, Vopry uh, sets to work on that. And uh, as, as you're going through that display, um, the the Narsican, uh Bahan, he's looking over the captain's chair and its current occupant. Say, uh, do do we know whether this this thing here makes good eaten? No, no, don't the captain doesn't need it anymore. Don't even think about it. The captain will need it when he is returned. Uh, you think that uh, I I thought he heard uh, I thought I heard that like he, uh, didn't he get beamed back dead too or do we oh we don't have a body do we? I'm gonna I'm gonna step up to him, and I know this is a bad idea with with the Nausicaan. The captain is alive until we determine otherwise. For the time being, I will take command relinquishing that command when we find Captain Tabak and I look to the rest of the crew does anybody else have any disagreements with that does anybody else have a disagreement I don't know Croker is like lying on the floor totally passed out so probably not Kresik don't care. Zainal don't care. I'm testing Azik. I want to see how this goes. <laughs> <laughs> It'll go as good as my right arm. Um, I will say, yeah. like, there, Kresik does, like, you can't see it because he's now replaced his shattered um, eye shield. His shattered eye shield. He had two sets. He had a gold set and a silver set, so now they're just mismatched. Um, oh, <laughs> Um, but he, his eyes do turn to see what Raldar's reaction to Azik taking charge is. And seeing none, he just stands there. Don't, don't start none, won't be none. <laughs> yeah. Azik, for your part, give me a presence plus command roll. I'm going to see if this... Uh, can out roll um, Bahan is going to roll daring plus security to see whether he's in a mood to challenge can I use composure you As may absolutely and you do have momentum there as well oh, uh, <laughs> woo oh, <laughs> my. oh boy so Bahan, with three successes. He is going to get up in your face and, like, kind of, uh, like, thrust his mug a little bit aside, some blood wine spilling onto the deck. But you just hold that determined uh, gaze and, like, you guys are, like, right up against each other, brow to brow, and um, with four successes, Bahan is forced to relent to your input here. Says, 
Question. Uh. Does any of the blood wine land on my boot? Uh, no, it does not. Okay. We were going to have a bigger problem if it had. Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you're the new boss, then the same as old boss, you're, you're still the uh, still the Klingons. I guess that means I fly the ship now. I can do that. Raldar, with your, uh, do you understand uh, transporter technology very well with your engineering? Mm. I know the basics, but not a expert. I would say. And Croker's not in, not on the bridge, right? Croker's unconscious on the bridge right now. Well, dazed. Yeah. Yeah, he's not going to help. Um. I'm wondering with the uh, the transporter. Obviously, he was taken. The captain was taken. Um, what would be the range of, say, a the a transport like that? Um, could it be a? It, obviously, it probably could be a, a orbital, but more than likely, it's planetary. What are your thoughts on the range of that? Mm. Basically, I'm trying to figure out a better way to to have Vopri pinpoint um, a sensor grid. Gotcha. Let me, let me run a quick conversion and I can get you some information here. Maybe it was one of those like galactic transporters like they had in the Star Trek Into Darkness. Uh, that oh, that yes. is what I'm afraid of, but yeah. something like that would be highly expensive and thus it would be probably one of the bigger houses and if that's the case um we're going to have a rather interesting challenge on our hands to, to rescue the captain. Ah, uh, yes. One of those transporters from my favorite movie. Right? Wasn't it just the best Star Trek movie ever? Yes, yes. I my haven't goodness, had the a... sarcasm <laughs> is thick. <laughs> my God, wow. the feelings there. I didn't have as that much fun with a Star Trek until Star Trek Picard. <laughs> The feeling. I enjoy hey now. Simon Pegg uh, did a decent job as Scotty. Simon Pegg is a fan. Like, yes. Anyway, let's not derail this. Anyways. Yep. Yeah, yep. Because yeah. I could go on and on about that, but let's yeah. not. We're not here. It's for the mid season yeah. special. <laughs> noting, yeah, noting this down for the next time we uh, we have a Q and A session. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, oh by, boy. By the way, Victor, I did fire something to you in the Discord. Yeah. All right, the I got the ranges, boys. Uh, well, range wise, the transporters would be one hundred to one hundred fifty thousand kill kill camps. Kill camps. Well, Vopri, can our sensors reach that at their current stat? Uh, they can conduct a uh, very general sweep, but I. Don't, I do not know if I could give it a full power sensor lead out that way. Uh, it would be uh, very difficult without the main engines functioning or adequate power. As it is, uh, I have had to switch over to auxiliary systems in order to keep it running. If we continue at this rate, uh, well, eventual... Uh, Eventually, supporting the systems will uh, tap into battery power. Mm. All right. What are your guys' thoughts? Should we go? Should we try to bypass the captain's security stuff, or should we go back to the scene of the the conflict? And the only problem with that is is if we run into 
the kind of trouble that we ran into on our way back. I could go. They are not looking for me, are they? There's a slight note of concern in his voice when he asked that question. I don't believe so. Where did it happen? It happened... What was the name of that bar? <laughs> Uh, you'd recall that the captain was visiting the Den of Iniquity uh, when last you had uh, spoken with him. Ah, I've been there before. I was there the first time we were there. Perfect. Hmm. If people knew that the captain was here. If they knew that Raldar was here, then either we are being tracked or our information was sold. It was that damn little girl for, that we ran in that uh, stabbed me. I know it. I know it. I just know it. Do not speak <laughs> of her like that. We can't forget the woe aspect. She's also gone. Where? True. She is what? Yeah. Woe got transported just uh, during our fight. She was talking with another Pazinti. I got a good hit. I got a good hit on on the Kazinti that was that was getting ready to take her and couldn't get couldn't get the finishing blow before they were gone. You don't happen to have a tracker on her too. I don't put trackers on my patients. That would be unethical. I could just see Zion all grinning right now. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> Are these attacks connected? Uh, I'd like to spend two momentum to affect the story. In what? Regard? If it's not, if it's not already, if it's not already there, um, yes, they are connected, and our nice uh, Nausikin is the one, uh, one who sold the uh, information. Well, shit. That's... Or potential. Or potentially uh, in a in a drunken um, whatever stoop was talking uh, to one of the cargo loaders and blurted it out. Dear, oh dear. The, I, I'm just pondering all the dumb scenarios where, um, like... I don't know, Bahan running a uh, a video log, or, or rather the video version of the blog, um, or streaming. Hey there, it's your boy. God damn. <laughs> um, I, will, I will at the very least allow the momentum to shift on that scene if um, Azik would like to make one final turn to the, uh, if he has his suspicions in this case. How would you how would you like to treat that coming into this? Well, I have my suspicions. Azek has his suspicions, I should say. And uh, 
where is where is the uh, the where is the uh, Nosigan? Is he sitting in my chair? He's leaning against it, uh, taking a sip of blood wine. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna. This is probably gonna take a security and some kind of probably fitness, um, but I'm gonna grab him and just slam him up against the the wall. What do you know about this? And. Uh, of course, we got to roll for that before I say anything. Okay, let's uh, tell you what. Give me a daring plus security roll uh, with any type of brawling sort of uh, combat here. I will allow hand this to hand combat. That would work. I'll allow it to even go uncontested here just because he is caught off guard by this. Much yep. as your GM was. I mean, I'm. I'm going to, I'm going to, I know I'm spending a lot of momentum here, guys. I'm sorry. I'm going to spend the momentum to get a third day. Yeah. You actually, you don't need to deduct from what you currently have because uh, I realize you would have earned one back from that earlier roll anyway. So um, yeah. let's see. That is two points of, uh, or that is two successes that you got on your last roll, but you also get a complication so uh, let me ask first, uh, well, first let me just say, with those two successes, you would have one incoming moment, because there, a uh, melee check like that always requires a base difficulty one for success. Um, so I can spend one momentum to, to remove the complication? It still costs two momentum to remove uh, it costs the complication. Two. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, unless you let the complication be that the fact that he, uh, his blood wine does spill on my boot. Well, the, I guess, yeah, let me ask here, uh, would you want that narrative, would you want a narrative complication and, uh, to risk what the GM has in mind, would you prefer Narr to yep. buy it off with, or ignore it and provide threat or to, uh, buy it off with remaining momentum? Or you know me. I love my. I love my narrative complications. I like. Oh boy! All right. Yeah, as you slam him against the wall, uh, holding him in place with your one arm, his he has again lost a fair bit of blood wine. He says, Ugh. "Well, I'll say this much. There's apparently an interesting bunch here." And a remarkable bit of, uh, a remarkable bit that will sell for a remarkable bit of coin to know uh, who and where you are. I've, I've been charting the course the whole time. You had the, uh, you had the miners, you had the creel, you have the, uh, uh, you, uh, you have the, uh, those mercenaries, you have so many people that, uh, with the right coin, uh, it moves quite a bit. And you know, you know what? I'm just, uh, I think that you should just thank me that for not telling the Empire about it. Because nobody'd want that. And with what little blood wine is left in his cup, he dumps a little, or he drinks a little bit more before dumping it on, uh, down and getting some on your boots, and he is going to try to smack you over the head with his cup. Got it. All right, so this one you can contest here. Uh, so oh, I, daring, I'll be contesting it. Daring plus security. Bahan will score a single success to your two. So he drunkenly tries to uh, attack with the bludgeon. Um, describe how you block him. I, uh, as well, I obviously I don't have a right arm. Um, for those of you listening, I, Azic is one armed. So, yeah. Um, so he'll take his right arm and kind of apply a little pressure on his, on, on his shoulder and then bring him down. And while he's bringing him down, he'll bring his knee up to his gut. Um, go ahead and give me an unarmed strike there, please. Is that daring and security again, or is that no, no, the that's... damage? Just the damage roll, please. Ooh. Oh, oh. God shoot! Damn. 
That is six uh, points of damage plus two effects, which give you another eight. And that sends him prone, so you completely knock the wind out of him. And uh, I think you, I think you actually missed his gut and got him in in both his dicks. <laughs> this is a Gnostic and not uh, not a Klingon. Oh, then is then you got him in the chomes. All right. Anyway, uh, let, let me actually take a look here. Uh, I should ask because you did technically meet the difficulty to do it. Uh, would this have been a? Uh, would you have been going for a non-lethal injury or non-lethal? Is... Okay, good. So that is still enough to, um, yeah, wind him, send him clutching his gut to the floor, uh, kind of like his face falling into a bit of the splattered blood wine on the floor, uh, coughing and struggling to regain himself. I look over at Kresik. Doc, you uh, fancy some fun? Find out what this Patak knows. By any means necessary. Mm. Well, uh, Rev, do you have an immediate reaction to that, or do you want to have Kresik think about that request? Yeah, I'm going to have to think about that. Okay. Then I think that that is where we should probably call today's session and leave off uh, for the week. So for those of you that are joining us in the archive, we hope you enjoyed tonight's session and uh, hope you have a good rest of your day. Until then, uh, if you want to join us, we will be back Wednesday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Till then, chaplat.